Hi everybody, I'm KHOU 11 meteorologist Pat Cavlin coming to you from Houston, Texas with an update on the latest with Hurricane Milton. It is Sunday, October 6th, 2024. This is the evening update uh, with this storm. As of the 4 p.m. Central Time update, this was a 85 mile per hour Category 1 hurricane, uh, now starting to move to the east at about 7 miles per hour. A really symmetrical and unfortunately really healthy looking storm here in the Bay of Campeche in the southern Gulf of Mexico. Even though we don't have an eye to the storm right now, the reason why we can tell that it's a healthy looking storm is because of the symmetry that the storm has, almost a perfect circle around. So it's got a really strong core going, and that is going to help the storm to organize and to rapidly intensify as we go through the next 24 to 36 hours. So again, winds as of this afternoon at 85 miles per hour. Unfortunately, this is going to intensify and uh, and deepen so quickly that this specific information will be out of date pretty fast. This is going to probably be a category two hurricane by the time we get to Monday morning. So that's just an idea. Just trying to give you an idea of how fast this thing is going to evolve. Uh, this is where it's located in the Gulf of Mexico. Again, Bay of Campeche here uh, just to the west of the Yucatan Peninsula. We're about 500 miles to the south of the city of Houston and then about 760 miles to the southwest of the city of Tampa. So this storm has a lot of real estate to work with on that forecast path that takes it towards the Tampa Bay area, about 750 miles of unobstructed, warm ocean waters to work with to intensify and to organize. And that is why Milton is going to be such a dangerous storm as we get into the start of this week. So here's the latest forecast from the National Hurricane Center. This is the one that came out at 4 p.m. And the big change with this forecast was the increase in intensity to category four status. So by the overnight tonight, by midnight tonight, we're expecting this storm to be a category two hurricane with winds sustained at 105 miles per hour. So just over the next few hours, this thing is going to jump from a cat one to a cat two. From there, again, it becomes a category four storm by tomorrow night into early Tuesday morning, eventually peaking with sustained winds at 145 miles per hour Tuesday afternoon. So we have a long stretch of time where this storm is expected to be in category four status uh, range, at least 24 hours with this latest forecast. Then as we get to Wednesday, there is a potential that the storm weakens just a bit down to category three status with winds at 120 miles per hour on approach to the Florida West Coast. That's not going to matter in the grand scheme of the impacts that Florida will see. And here's the reason why we've got at least 24 hours where this storm is forecast to be a category four storm. That means 24 hours of the ocean waves in the Gulf of Mexico building and building and building. Once that storm loses the intensity, those waves aren't just going to diminish. They stay at that level. So even though it's a category three storm potentially at landfall, the storm surge will likely be category four level. So please, if you live along the Florida West Coast. If you're in a storm surge prone area or if you have friends or family that are, let them know that. Let them know that, hey, don't let your guard down just because the storm's weakening on approach to the coast. Think about Hurricane Katrina. Hurricane Katrina was a category five hurricane in the Gulf and then weakened to category three status before landfall. Not much help there, right? Kat Katrina obviously doing devastating damage to New Orleans, and we could see devastating storm surge to areas from Tampa Bay to Southwest Florida as we get to Wednesday afternoon and Wednesday evening as the storm approaches from the south and west. Um, so with this increase in intensity, the National Hurricane Center forecaster that put this discussion together, every time they release a forecast on the Hurricane Center website, they actually put out a full forecast discussion that you can actually go and read. And this was the, uh, an excerpt from that discussion, and I, and I want to include it just to give you the gravity of what's going on with this storm. Uh, this forecaster says, intensity guidance is about as bullish as I have seen in this part of the basin, the Gulf of Mexico, with almost every model showing a peak intensity of category four or five in the southern Gulf over the next day or two. So as a result, the National Hurricane Center forecast is raised from the previous one, from Cat 3 to Cat 4. But look at that last statement. 
and still this could be too low. Just to give you an idea of what the ceiling looks like on the potential for this storm. So what's steering it? We have two big features. We've got a big trough of low pressure that's digging in from the north in the form of a cold front. The other feature is an area of high pressure across the Caribbean. Both of these will work together to set up a highway for Milton to take right towards Florida as we get towards the middle of this week. So right now it is looking pretty much without a doubt that it will be the west coast of Florida. The question remains exactly where along the west coast and how strong will the storm be at landfall. So we have a bunch of different model plots. Each one of these white lines indicates a different computer model simulation of what the storm can do. They're in pretty good agreement. Again, taking it somewhere from the Big Bend Nature Coast down towards southwest Florida. Because we have all these lines, we're going to simplify this. So we take uh, a bunch of these different models and we average them. We get a consensus of what the general idea looks like, and the result are the black lines on the map. And you can see there's two schools of thought. One is a southern track, which would equal a weaker storm, and the other is a northern track. You can see there's more black lines. In fact, there's more white and black lines that go north. That indicates that stronger storm track, and that is in line with what the National Hurricane Center is showing. So here's future track. We'll stop the clock there. Tuesday morning, a well-consolidated symmetrical storm. But notice what's happening up to the north. We're starting to get these clouds sheared off. We'll talk about why that's happening in just a second. But close pass here to the northern Yucatan Peninsula, and then it takes that hard turn towards the north and east, somewhere towards the west coast of Florida. Again, whether it's Tampa Bay, Nature Coast, or Point South, that remains to be seen. But everyone's in the cone right now in the areas that I just mentioned. Remember I just showed you the tops of those clouds getting sheared off in future track. Here's the reason why. We do have that trough digging in, that cold front. That's associated with the jet stream. That's going to be digging here across the southern states as we get to Tuesday afternoon, Tuesday evening. The deeper the blue, the stronger the wind in the upper levels of the atmosphere, which means stronger wind shear. Why is that important? Twofold. One is that in the Tuesday time frame when the hurricane's down here and the jet stream's here, that hurricane will be in the sweet spot for actually using the energy from the jet stream to intensify. Not too close, but also not far away enough. So just close enough where this jet stream will actually help to ventilate the top of the storm. Basically, you need the top of the storm to get replaced constantly to get that rapid intensification. And that's what the jet stream will do. It'll actually create this vacuum out of the top of the storm, allowing this thing to really ramp up. So that's why, or at least that's part of the thinking as to why this storm will rapidly intensify as we get to Tuesday. But watch what happens as it starts to get too close to the jet stream. We see that intensity drop again, category four to category three. And we saw hints of that on future track with the top of the storm getting sheared away. So this is the scenario where wind shear could actually help to weaken the storm a little bit on the approach to Florida. But don't forget about what I said at the beginning of this video. By this point, it's already been a category four for at least a day. The waves are set up. The storm surge is ready to come in at category four level. And so the only diminishing impact with it going from a four to a three would be wind. But still a significant storm any way you cut it right now for much of the Florida Peninsula, especially the Florida West Coast. So here's the bottom line. Rapid intensification for Hurricane Milton is expected through tonight into Monday, possibly even into Tuesday as well. And in that period of time, we could get to category four or even five status by the time it's all said and done. Whether it's a cat three, cat four, or cat five, significant impacts to Florida are expected on Wednesday. That is regardless of what happens, of, of what the intensity, of what the end result intensity is going to be. But what we really have to keep a close eye on the next few days is the exact placement of landfall. Because if landfall ends up being just north of Tampa Bay, huge storm surge impacts for the Tampa Bay St. Pete area. If landfall is just to the south, not as much in terms of storm surge impacts for Tampa Bay, but big time getting into the Sarasota, Bradenton, Port Charlotte, and Fort Myers area. A lot of moving pieces. If you live anywhere on the Florida West Coast, stay on top of the forecast the next three days. If you have friends or family there, let them know, share this with them. 
And please, if you're given an evacuation notice, heed that warning because the storm surge from this system looks to be unsurvivable. We're going to have more updates coming up for you in the coming days. But again, stay on top of this forecast as Milton moves towards Florida.